OneTex new Hyperflow AIOs come in 240 and 360 millimeter sizes, both in black or white color schemes and with 28 millimeter thick fans. The 240 is priced at 85 US dollars and the 360 is a mere 95 dollars. So with those specifications and MSRP prices, do you really need to know any more about these AIOs before you go out and buy them? Well, we think you do. So let's take a closer look at these coolers and stick them on our test systems. So apart from the difference in colour between the 240 and the 360, they are basically the same coolers. Obviously, they're a different size and the 240 will come with a few less mounted screws for the fans. So because they're both basically the same, I'll be concentrating on the 360 version and giving you a bit of a walkthrough of the specifications and features of these coolers. These are available to purchase now. They have an MSRP price of $85 for the 240mm version. That's whether it's in white or black and just $95 for the 360 again either in white or black color schemes in the uk you can pick them up from scan the 240 is priced at 69.99 pounds and the 360 is 84.99 available from scan in either black or white color schemes and to me that sounds like extremely good value almost too good to be true montec hyperflow are available in 240 and 360 millimeter sizes in either black or white color schemes hyperflow aios are equipped with montec metal Pro 12 120 millimeter ARGB fans become pre-assembled to the cooler with daisy chain smart connectors and the thickness of 28 millimeters. Hyperflow features a powerful pump with a max speed of 3,100 RPM providing efficient cooling while the pump top cover features a gemstone design with ARGB lighting effects. Montec Hyperflow coolers are compatible with all current Intel and AMD desktop sockets and come with a six year warranty for peace of mind. So these Hyperflow AAOs, they come semi assembled so the fans are attached to the radiator out of the box on this one i've actually flipped the fans the other way around and switched the orientation of the cables normally they would come so that if you have the radiator mounted in the top of your case the tubing will be at the front and the cables will be towards the right hand section so the cable management section of your case which is probably the optimal position for installing an AIO in the roof of the case. Hyperflow fans that come with the cooler are 28 millimeter thickness, so a few millimeters thicker than your average fans, usually they're 25 millimeters. These are 28 millimeter thick fans. Potentially that can help improve static pressure. The Montec Metal Pro 12 28 millimeter fans have a speed range up to 2,200 RPM PWM controlled, maximum airflow of 76.2 cubic feet per minute, maximum air pressure of 3.18 millimeters H2O, and a maximum noise output of 29.1 decibels they have a fluid dynamic bearing and a four pin pwm connection and three pin five volt argb header connection rgb lighting effects on these fans are on the fan blades they have quite large hubs and they diffuse the argb leds they do a good job of diffusing those the rgb lighting effects do look good you've also got a secondary rgb lighting zone on top of the pump cover montex say this is a gemstone design i kind of get where they're coming from with that it does resemble a gemstone i suppose when the rgb lighting is illuminated radiator is a standard aluminium radiator with single row fins and 20 fins per inch it's a 27 millimeter thick radiator has a montec logo on either side of the radiator. The coating looks nice and smooth. It's like a satin finish, so it's not too glossy. It doesn't show fingerprints up too badly. At the radiator side, the tubing is fixed in position and it's got these chrome trims around the ends where it goes into the radiator. Rubber tubing covered with a braided sleeving. We've said in the past that this is a premium feature. It's not really a premium feature anymore. Just about every new AIO that comes out now comes with this braided sleeving, but it does look nice. There's different levels of braided sleeving. This does look okay at the cpu block side so it's a microscived copper cold plate on the base it comes with this plastic cover on it also comes with thermal paste pre-applied to the base we've removed it because we use arctic mx6 thermal compound for all our testing We've already tested the coolers. Pump speed is PWM controlled with a range up to 3,100 RPM. It also comes as default with the Intel upper mounting bracket AIO OEMs still seem to always ship them with the Intel bracket on. There is obviously an AMD 
upper mounting bracket in the box with the rest of the accessories. It is a convex cold plate. At the other end of the tubing, you've got these 90 degree rotating fittings. And again, the chrome trims around the fittings. In terms of the connectivity, so the pump is a four pin PWM control pump comes with a standard four pin pwm motherboard header the rgb lighting to the pump is a, a standard three pin five volt connection and it comes with this daisy chain connection so you can connect the fans to this pump connection and then just plug it all into your motherboard or into an argb controller or argb hub if you already have one there's no hub that comes with the cooler so it is technically the default method is to connect it up to a motherboard connectivity of the fans you can see these are daisy chain fans so they connect together using these proprietary connections. So each fan has this short daisy chain cable. And then at the end, the proprietary connection splits off to a standard four pin PWM motherboard header and a standard three pin five volt ARGB header. Obviously you can link this to the daisy chain on the pump. They're quite good quality connectors though. They just have a little clasp there and it just opens up easily. They're easy to connect. Potentially, if you had more of these fans, in your case at the rear or at the front you could potentially connect them up and daisy chain them all together and then just run them just off a single four pin pdm and a single three pin five volt argb header in a way it's quite a basic aio it has the two zones of argb lighting but there's no other innovative features no additional vrm coolers no lcd displays or anything like that which is expected for this price range the oem for this is a Poltec, which is shared by various other vendors so we know the quality is okay and it comes with a six year warranty. Included in the box with the Hyperflow AIO coolers is all the mounting hardware for Intel and AMD installation. As well as that, you also get a couple of hose clips if you want to uh, tidy up the way the hoses look. On the white one, you get white clips. On the black one, it's black clips. There's also this tool that comes for tightening up the standoffs. There's no standoffs to install it on AMD, but on Intel installations, you do need a tool like this. You also get a tube of thermal compound. It's only quite a small tube, but the cooler does come with thermal compound pre-applied to the base. It's nice to see that Montec includes some extra. So if you get a bad mount or somewhere down the line in the future, you want to upgrade your CPU or change motherboard platform or something like that, and you need to remount the cooler, you've got some extra thermal compound there. There's also this template for applying the thermal compound. You stick this to the base of the cooler, apply the thermal compound over it, peel it off, and it should be in the correct position for installing on the CPU. And there's also this spreading tool for the thermal compound. If you're looking for a new chair, then you should definitely check out Boolies. I'm currently sat on their Ninja Pro gaming chair, which is one of three models from their gaming series alongside the Elite and the Master. So if you're looking for something new to stick in your setup that you can sit on and game and work, then I recommend definitely checking out boolies.co.uk. Installation on Intel or AMD systems is very similar. However, on Intel, you do have to install a Intel specific backplate and upper standoffs. On AMD platforms, it retains the stock AMD backplate. Since the coolers come with thermal compound pre-applied, there's no need to add any additional compound to the CPU. However, we've removed the stock thermal compound and replaced it with Arctic MX6. To install the cooler on AMD platforms, all you need to do is fit the AMD upper mounting bracket to the pump body. Loosely fasten the AMD clamps to the bracket. Lower the pump body down over the CPU aligned with the upper mounting clamps. Hook the clamps over the stock upper mounting brackets and then tighten them down evenly for best contact. To complete the installation all that's needed is to connect the pump PWM cable to the motherboard CPU option header. Connect the PWM cable for the fans to the CPU fan header. Daisy chain the fans and the pump RGB connections together. Then lastly connect the 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connection from the pump to the ARGB header on the motherboard. So installation on Intel and AMD platforms is very quick and simple. On the Intel platform it takes slightly longer because you have to install the Intel backplate and standoffs whereas on AMD it utilizes the stock AMD backplate. On either platform I'd say installation takes around 10 to 15 minutes maximum for a novice uh, that includes installing the radiator in your case so it is a quick and simple process for the thermal performance we've run the usual test which consists of a Cinebench 30 minute sustained run 
with the coolers in various different configurations. If you want to check out the full testing methodology, make sure you head over to kitguru.net where there will be a full written review for the Montec Hyperflow coolers. We'll start by looking at noise output as this will give us a good indication of performance based on the noise. Both the 360 and 240 millimeter Hyperflow coolers are loud at maximum fan speed. The 360 millimeter version will be very distracting for some at 54 decibels. So tuning fan speed will be needed to get the best noise to thermal performance ratio for most users. With the Ryzen 9 7950X CPU manually overclocked and all cooler fans running at maximum RPM, the Montec Hyperflow coolers perform excellently here. Keeping the average CPU temperature at 64 degrees C over ambient for the 360 and 69 degrees C for the 240. It's not quite chart topping results but for the 360 at least it's in the top five coolers that we have tested on the 7950X. Reducing the cooler's fan speed to hit the 40 decibels target means the hyperflow fans are running significantly lower than the 2200 rpm maximum speed. This has an effect on thermal performance dropping the hyperflow 360 out of the top five but it still outperforms several more expensive 360 millimeter competitors. The 240 millimeter hyperflow produces similar performance to other 240 millimeter coolers we have previously tested. In the AMD PBO test clock speed is the important metric as the CPU adjusts clock speed based on target temperature so the best coolers will produce the higher clock multiplier. Like in the manual overclock test both of the Montec Hyperflow coolers perform okay here. At 51.1 times clock multiplier it's not the highest clock speed from the 360 but performance is on par with other similar coolers. The 240mm Hyperflow does particularly well here in fact it's the best PBO clock multiplier we have seen from a 240mm AO. So overall thermal performance on the 7950X is solid. Moving on to our Intel test system we start with a fixed clock speed and v-core with the coolest fans at maximum speed. The performance of the Hyperflow 360 is good with an average of 65 degrees C over ambient. However it's difficult to measure the performance of the 240 as it's the first of its size to be tested on this system so there's nothing similar to compare it to but at just 3 degrees C higher than the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 we think that's pretty solid performance. On the 13900K pulling 300 plus watts package power the Hyperflow coolers seem to hit a wall and we see a significant drop in thermal performance when the fan speed is reduced to the 40 decibels noise target. At 74.5 degrees C over ambient the 360 is running hot but it's still just within Intel spec while the 240 Hyperflow is running at 80 degrees C over ambient which means we see actual CPU package temperature consistently exceeding 100 degrees C which is far from ideal. Performance of the Hyperflow 360 improved at fixed 1400 RPM fans and moves it closer to the top performing 360 millimeter coolers at 72 degrees C over ambient which is okay but the 240 millimeter still struggles to keep the CPU at a safe temperature at 79.9 degrees over ambient the actual CPU package will still be hitting 100 degrees C. So in terms of thermal performance particularly on the AMD 7950X test system we're really impressed with the Montec Hyperflow AOs. The 240 in the PBO test was the best score we've got from a 240 millimeter AO so far in that test. However, on the 13900K where the package power is in excess of 300 watts, they do start to struggle when you limit the fan noise output to 40 decibels. So I probably wouldn't recommend using the 240 on a high-end LJ1700 CPU, but the 360 is just within limits. However, if you take into consideration the low price of these coolers then this looks like a good price to performance ratio particularly on the AMD 7950X. Staying on the positive note they're also available in both black and white colour schemes so they'll fit in with either black or white theme builds. The RGB lighting effects are good, the RGB is nice and bright. On the fans the RGB lighting is diffused well, there's no significant light bleed from around the fan hubs which is good to see. Installation on both AMD and Intel platforms is really quick and simple especially on AMD because it utilises the stock AMD backplate, there's no additional RGB hubs or fan hubs to install everything connects directly to the motherboard which saves time so the installation is very quick there are a couple of negatives to these coolers so the noise output at maximum fan speed is quite loud at 54 decibels the 360 is one of the loudest coolers we've tested and if you run it at that speed you would get irritated by that noise level so you have to do some work 
adjusting fan speed or creating your own custom fan curves to make the noise levels tolerable. Thermal performance on the 13900K, it's a very difficult CPU to keep cool. The 300 plus watts package power for the 240 is a bit much, so I wouldn't recommend buying a 240 if you're thinking of running a 13900K or a 14900K or even either of the KS CPUs. The 360 should just cope, but again, noise levels will obviously reduce the thermal performance if you're having to reduce noise levels to suit your own needs. So, but at the super low price of around 85 pounds it's one of the cheapest 360 millimeter only one cpu coolers that you can buy in the uk and if you're thinking of running it on a high-end amd cpu even when tuning fan speeds down to suit your noise requirements you should still get solid thermal performance so for amd it sounds like quite a bargain even on some of the high-end intel cpus if you're happy to run a higher fan speed with a bit more noise, it should do the job on those platforms too. So that's the Montec Hyperflow ARGB 240 and 360 cooler. Let me know what you think of the coolers in the comment section. If you've enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. If you've not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that now. And uh, if you like what we do here at KitGuru and you want to help support us, you could always head over to the store and pick up some merch, or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to the website.